Here's an acceleration lab that you can do at home. The materials that you need for this lab are a measuring tape, a camera, some sort of colorful tape, and most important of all, something that rolls really smoothly. Optionally, you'll need something soft like a pillow so you don't damage your parents' floor or your toy. Prop your flat surface with something short. Whatever you use, make sure that it's sturdy and doesn't scratch your parents' floor. You know that your surface is at a good incline when it takes around 2-3 to three seconds for your object to roll off the surface. Use a ruler and some tape to mark down the length of 1 meter on your flat surface. Try to keep the tape markings as small as possible, but big enough so that you can see the tape on camera. The object needs to roll parallel to these two markings. Optionally, if you have ball bearings and some sort of straight metal track at home, you can use that instead for your lab. Place your camera as far as possible from your surface, and zoom into the surface until it fills the entire frame. This is to minimize any procedural errors due to parallax error and camera lens distortion. You can use any kind of digital camera. Ideally, the higher the resolution, the better. Film the object rolling down the entire length of the flat surface. Make sure that you let go of the object and don't push the object by accident. You'll want to ensure that the object starts rolling from rest. When you are satisfied with your recording, transfer the video onto your computer and install a free open source motion tracking software like Tracker. There are probably some free apps for cell phones and if you happen to find one that's ad free and does not force you to pay to make the app useful, please let us know in the comment section below. For this video, I'll show you how to use the Tracker software. Go to fizzlets.org forward slash tracker and download the version that works for your computer. When you're in the software, go to File, Open File, and open the video that you've just recorded. On the toolbar, click on Calibration Tools icon, New, Calibration Tape, and use your mouse wheel to zoom into your first tape marking. When you hold down Shift, the mouse pointer will turn into a fancy precision pointer. While holding down Shift, click on the first tape marking. Then zoom out using the mouse wheel, and zoom into your second tape marking. Click on the second tape marking. A blue digital ruler will pop up, but it does not know its scale yet. So click on the box in the middle, and replace the value with the number 1 for 1 meter. As you can see, this is why the tape markings need to be big enough to be visible on camera, but small enough so that you don't induce too much parallax error. Let's ensure that the software is tracking only in one dimension. On the toolbar, click on the coordinate axis icon. You should see a magenta colored coordinate system pop up on your viewport. Zoom into your video and find a point of interest on your object, such as a headlamp or the middle of a wheel. Drag the origin of the coordinate system onto this target. On the right side, align the x-axis along the path of your object's motion. Press the play button to see if your target lines up with this virtual x-axis. Readjust the x-axis as necessary, such that your target always remains on the virtual x-axis. Now this next part is the longest part of the motion tracking process. Although the software has an auto tracking feature, Usually it does not work very well, so you'll have to motion track it manually. Find the first frame on your video where you've just let go of your object. On the toolbar, click on the Create icon, and then click on Point Mass. Hold down the Shift key on your keyboard, and the mouse pointer will turn into a precision pointer. Click on your target, and the software will memorize that point and automatically advance onto the next video frame. Keep holding down the Shift key and keep clicking on your target. You may need to zoom in and out on your mouse wheel to reposition your viewport with your target. This entire process will take a while, so be patient. The more careful you are with your target alignment, the smoother your position time graph will be. When you have completed tracking your object, rewind your video and click on the play button. Sit back and watch your wonderful accomplishment so far. Good job, junior scientist. Next, click on the up triangle on the top right hand side of the position time graph. If you've set up your experiment correctly, you should see a quadratic curve opening upwards. 
At this point, you might have come to realize that you didn't set up your lab equipment properly. Luckily, everything so far has been free, so don't be afraid to set up and recapture your experiment again, this time knowing what to watch out for. Unfortunately, the tracking software does not print out the position time graph very well. So while the graph is still on full screen, right mouse click on the periwinkle region and click on the copy image. Open up Word, change your paper orientation to landscape, and reduce your page margins. Paste the picture inside the document, type an appropriate title for your graph, and stretch out the graph as necessary. Print out the graph and follow the instructions on course pack page 15 of what is expected from you for your lab report. Remember that most marks are awarded for showing all your work, so make sure you utilize a memory aid grasp and include units in every part of your solution. When you have completed your work, staple your lab together, make sure your name is at the front, and scan or physically submit your lab report to your teacher before the due date. It's a good idea to reread the lab instructions one more time before submitting to ensure that you've included all the necessary components for full marks. Have fun enduring every moment of conducting this lab, and I'll see you next class. <laughs> oh, Michael Bay, why did my friend have to die? <laughs> Turn that frown upside down. <gasps> Jazz, you're alive. Yay!